Hi, right, welcome to Mac John's Cooking Show, and it's a nice summertime day, and we're out here in the streets of Westchester, and I'm going to show you what I do every day before I start cooking. I come out here, and I root through all the vegetables at the Gay Street vendor. You know, Kit's my buddy. He has some of the finest stuff around, and I want to show you what I do. Now, I'm going to go in the back here, and I'm going to start going through some of the boxes, okay? All right, now we're backstage over here, under the tent, under the big top. And I'll tell you what, I like finding fruit and vegetables this way, folks. I like to have a hands-on. I'll tell you why. A lot of times, you just don't get what you want when you have it delivered. I like a certain type of thing. I like my fruit to be ripe. I like my tomatoes to be there. And I like to know what I'm getting before I pay for it. Now, right now, beans are in. And you can come down here and you can get a bag of beans like this for a buck, a buck fifty. I don't know how many people you can feed with this. Well, I'm going to get myself some beans because that's what I want. I need a bag of onions because I'd like to make some nice uh, sautéed vegetables. And I know I'm going to need, need onions, so I'll grab some onions. Excuse me, Carl. Um, you have peppers? That's right here. Peppers? Nice green peppers. You have the green ones? Let's see what we have. We have here. some mixed here. Have some the, uh, mixed? Yeah, I want, um, let me have two bags, Carl, of, the, of these, okay? No and then I'll, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do some stuffed peppers later on today, folks. And uh, I want to have the peppers a certain way. Well, don't forget to call me for dinner, then. Uh, you call me anything, but don't call me late for dinner. Yeah. I hear you. Hey, Carl, um, yeah. these are jalapenos? Those are jalapenos. I love fresh jalapenos, folks. And I'll tell you what, you take these and you roast them up in oil and garlic, and you don't cook them too far. You just kind of blanch them down a little bit by roasting, not by you know, putting them in water. And then you put them um, in the refrigerator and you take them out when you need them, and they're just so tasty. Um, by, by doing that, it keeps them from turning on you. Now, you notice I've gotten a lot of green in there so far. Um, I need something red. How about them beef steaks I've been seeing you with, Carl? Now, these are here a little taste on the green side. Well, that's what we want, because we're going to fry them up. We got some here a little redder, if you like redder. Well, let me see that these green ones you had that you were telling me about. Now, see, like, when you have a green tomato, folks, and let me see this one here. Thank you, Walter. Um, this is a green tomato. It's obviously, it's not ripe. But I'll tell you what, if you would take this tomato, slice it, bread it, and fry it, and then put some chicken gravy on it, mama me, you have a taste treat. It turns into pure sugar. It's extremely sweet. It's, it'll actually blow your mind. I'm gonna take that one back right there, and I'm gonna cook it for you when we get back to the shop. Carl, I'm going to get a couple of these tomatoes here, okay? Because I'm going to take them back and I'm going to fry them up. I want to show the people what we're doing there with them, okay? Uh, do you have any mushrooms left? Yes, sir. I know they go fast. They go too fast. We never get enough of them. Yeah. See the mushrooms? You come in here, wouldn't you pay for those little tiny plastic things in the store, folks, for mushrooms? It's, it's, it's highway robbery. You come down here and you get some beautiful stuff. Some really nice stuff. Look at that. And it's only a buck. I mean, it's a buck. It's a buck. Can't eat it. I need some limes while I'm here. Okay. I'm going to have some limes because the bartenders back at Alibis at work, they need these to make those nice cool drinks for you in the summertime. And I'll make sure I bring some back to my boys. You always have to stay good with them. All right, what else do we have? I need some lettuces. What do we have in the way of lettuce? Up front, we have romaine and regular. We have romaine and regular? Regular lettuce. Also cabbage. Oh, yes. Now, I want to, I want to show you something. You know, all too many times I hear people say, well, if it's cheap, it can't be good. Oh, really? You smash it in the core with your hand, you take it, and you open it up, and ladies and gentlemen, it can't be any fresher than that. And if you can smell it, it smells so green, so fresh, so crisp. All right, so I'm gonna get a couple more heads of that. Are they little potatoes? Yes, these are the all-purpose ones. These little ones here are little And I just love this part. I take this part here and I shred it up and I use it on the plates to lay things on. So this way I utilize everything, I don't waste it. That's the idea, don't waste it. Now, I have some zucchinis back at the shop that I got yesterday. What'd you say? 
Uh, I don't see any up here. Piece of peppers, be right. So I guess the zucchinis are all sold. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have enough stuff. So why don't we go back to the shop and I'm gonna take some of these things and make them for you, okay? Okay, we're back. Wasn't that fun? Going out and seeing me pick up the produce and coming back here with it? Okay, you remember this green tomato that Walter handed me when we were under the tent because I couldn't find one in the initial box? Well, here that is that same tomato. And I just want to show you something here. I'm going to take a couple eggs, crack my egg. Okay, I'll just come in here and... I'll Use the tip of my knife in here, because we know how to do this. Don't do this at home, folks, unless you're sure-footed or sure-handed. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that end piece off, okay? We don't need that. Now, you can see that this is green. Now, the center of it's slightly red. It's gotten red inside, but you can still tell that's a hard green tomato. A lot of folks see these and they say, oh, you can't eat that. Well, of course you don't slice it and you don't put it in your salad. You could, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's gonna have a flavor that you just might not be ready for. Now, what I wanna do is, I'm gonna take my special blend and I'm gonna season them up on the meat now. Okay, I'll turn them over so I get the seasoning on both sides so it tastes the same no matter where you are. Okay, now I'm gonna bread these up for you. Really simple. Now, I went down and saw my buddy Mario Berardi and um, his daughter, the sweet thing that she is, she ground up these fresh crumbs for me so they'll be all pretty for the show. Now, I'm going to take the tomatoes and put them in the flour. Isn't that pretty, folks? Look at that. I love that color green. Now, you know, the, the Mexicans take this and they put it with jalapenos and onions and cook them up uh, in, in stock and they make a gravy out of them that they use on their enchiladas. Okay, now you just shake it around in there. Now keep one hand dry, one hand wet. Shake it around, let me turn it around over here. I'll shake it around, make sure it's covered all the way around, okay? Put that in there, put that in there, okay? I'll get these out of my way here. Now, come in here, shake them around, okay? Now they're covered pretty nice, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my fryer later. Now at home, don't in a saute pan, but for me, because I have all the big toys, I'm gonna use them. Now, while that's working, let me get my towel here. Let me show you how to set this plate up. I'm gonna take one of my plates, I'm going to take a little bit of mashed potatoes that I made yesterday because there's nothing wrong with leftovers, folks. Leftovers are what America was built upon. Anybody who doesn't eat leftovers, they're doing a lot better off than I am. Now I'm going to smear some potatoes down on the bottom of that plate, okay? Now when my tomatoes come out, I'm going to put my tomato right on to the potato I'm going to hit it with a little bit of gravy, okay? Now, I don't use a microwave often, folks. But 30 seconds on a room temperature mashed potato should be more than enough. Now, while that's working, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a zucchini here, and I'm going to shred it. 
You're gonna just take it right here on your cheese shredder. Most people have these in their own home. This is a very common tool. You'd probably find the flat kind or the square box kind or even the curved type. You're gonna take that. I'm gonna take a little sesame oil because you know we like to saute in sesame oil. I'm gonna put the sesame oil into my pan and my pan's a temper pan and I trued it up already, I got it hot. And I'm gonna come right into here with my shredded zucchinis there. Oh, does that smell wonderful? Oh man, do you smell that, Griff? Yeah, I see that nod, he's nodding his head back there. He's going, yes, I can smell it. This must be torturous, folks, for Griff. Griff is our chief cameraman, sound tech engineer, he does everything. He does all the mix down at the shop. And he's got to sit there and watch me cook this stuff through the lenses. And he's seeing it, folks, bigger than life right now. And he's smelling it, so it must be torturous. Now I'm going to season it up with a little bit of my special blend. Mix it around real good. I'd like to wish uh, Jan Gilmore a happy birthday. I'd like to say hi to Rob down at uh, Sam's Pizza. I want to thank him for the other day for letting me in. I was starving. I needed a slice. And that cheesesteak you were making to go look pretty good, I have to say. I'd like to say hi to Bruce. It was an interesting conversation we had the other day. I appreciate it. I'd like to welcome Bill from down at Wilmington for inviting us to join their programming. We'll have a special treat for you all come September. I think we're going to bring our show and merge with another show just for a one-time gig um, down in Wilmington. I'd like to welcome the Wilmington market to Chester County again. Okay, now you let them cook up. Looking pretty neat, looking pretty neat. Now I'm gonna take a slice off this other tomato. Look how pretty these are. These are the, fr the, the first of the Jersey beef steaks, folks. You wanna have a sandwich, I'll tell you what, you get yourself a nice piece of that variety Italian bread, slice it, throw a little mayo or some olive oil and garlic on there, a few of them tomatoes, a slice of romaine, and a piece of onion, yo, -ho, let me tell you, it's like summertime stuff. I love summertime food. It's my favorite. Actually, my favorite food is what's in front of me. Okay, now let me just show you these. They're nice and golden brown and pretty. Huh? I come and get my potato. Okay, there's my beautiful potatoes. I'm gonna take these. Lay them right on there like that. We'll kick them right at a little slight angle. Then I'm going to hit them with just a little bit of gravy. You don't need much. Now this is a turkey gravy that I had made. You could use chicken, you could use beef, you could use tomato sauce, anything you like. And then I'm going to take some of the shredded zucchinis and put it right there with it. And that's a very, very fine dish. Now, what did it cost you? It didn't cost you much at all, folks. Now, a little trick. I'm gonna do my tip of the day. Right in here. You take a mushroom and you take a knife and you go like this. You score it all the way around, okay? Then you come back in right behind where you just cut, okay? And you're gonna take this piece out. You're gonna take that piece out, right like that, which is gonna flute the mushroom. Now there's tools for this, but most people don't have them in their home. Okay, now I'm gonna take it, and just to bring the color contrast out, so you can see the difference in there. I'm gonna fry it up here a little bit, or you could have blanched it. But I'm not going to do it much because I, I want it to be to be hard. But there you go. That's my garnish for the dish. And 
Now if you really look at this, we have a little bit of potatoes, some zucchini, the green tomato, and a mushroom. It's a very tasty dish, folks. It fits summertime. And what did it really cost you? Not much. And in today's economy, I suggest that you eat some dishes like this to help you get through the week. Okay? Now, let me put this over here for later because we always like to sit down and eat these things, the crew and I. Now, I'm going to take another pan. I'm going to put it down. And we're going to go through sauteed vegetables again. But this time, I'm going to do something completely different. Remember the jalapenos? Jalapenos! The jalapeno peppers. I'm going to take these whole jalapeno peppers. I'm going to take whole mushrooms. OK? I'm going to take an onion. An onion. Yo, we'll see. Eh? Try that bad boy on for size. I'm still waiting for you, Wilson, to get back to me about this cooking contest I want to have between the two of us. I'll cook your doors off, buddy. Don't you know? OK, now, a nice fresh onion, mushrooms, the jalapeno. We have some um, tomato over here, OK? What we're going to do is this. We're going to take these jalapenos, just like they are. We're going to throw them into a pan and add some oil, OK? We're going to use them whole, just like they are. In fact, I don't have enough in there. Let's throw some more of them bad boys in there. OK, now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the onion, and I'm going to rough cut chunk the onion, OK? Right in with it. Rough cut chunks, OK? I'm going to take the mushrooms, and I'm going to halve them. If it's a little button, I'll leave it alone. I'm going to cut them in half. OK? We just take these mushrooms here. I'll get some more, because we all like them. I want to make sure there's enough for all of us. Cut them in half. And we're going to throw them in, too. Turn that heat up. We want to start firing up that bad boy. Now I'm going to take this tomato. I'm going to cut right out of here where the stem was attached to the tomato, that little part there. You don't really want to eat that. I'm going to take the tomato, and I'm going to chunk this up again. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful tomato, folks? First of the Jersey beef steaks, and we have to thank New Jersey for being so close to us here in Pennsylvania. I'm looking forward to seeing some of that great seafood from my pop this year. You know, my dad is Jersey's one of Jersey's top anglers. He's really wonderful fisherman. And uh, periodically through the year, he comes home with a care package for good old son here. And I like seeing that big piece of albacore. And I want to wish you luck, Dad, with the tournament. The Turks Head Music Festival was real fun this year. It really was successful. You know, Kathy Milliken and uh, Su Susie Romanowski, they, those two gals, they worked very hard, along with all the other support groups. And I want to thank everybody, you know for all the time they put in. Now, if you notice how fresh that looks, folks, now I'm going to put a little bit of oregano in with that, a little pinch of basil in with that, and some cilantro. Now, what cilantro is, it's the leaf of coriander, OK? And it has its own flavor. Coriander has its flavor, the ground coriander, and the leaf has his. I suggest you use the leaf when you're doing saute dishes like this. OK, now while that's working up there, I'll take some green onion. Yeah, yeah, right. Some green onions. Don't you know. I throw them in here for two reasons. One, they're pretty, and they taste good. Now this dish here, you're going to treat it as an accompaniment dish, or you can serve it over rice. I suggest that you serve it over steak, 
or chicken. You can take yourself a nice New York strip steak, blacket it, and then put a couple scoops of that on top, and you've got and a couple of tortillas to help you push it, and you have yourself a fine dish. Okay, so while this is cooking, I want to wind down our show today and say, folks, there's a lot of vegetables out there. It's the season. Go out and get some. Make yourself healthy. Enjoy your life. I'll see ya later. Welcome to Mac John's Cooking Show, and I'm in my kitchen here at Alibi's in Westchester, and I have something special for you. Tracy is back, guys, from vacation, and she's going to be with us at the Cajun Cooking Party, and she's going to be one of our waitresses. Is the food great or what? It's wonderful. Good stuff. Should they come out and see us? We'd love to come. Come out and see us. We'll be here. I'll be one of your waitresses here at Alibi's. That's it. Okay, thank you very much, hon. I know you have chores you got to do, so you go do what you have to do, and I'm going to get back to work. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see you. Well, that was fun, folks. Okay, I want to bring up a couple of things that's going on right now. Um, some public announcement type stuff. On August 22nd, here at Alibi's, upstairs in my private dining room and bar area overlooking the stage, we're having from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock a Creole feast. And it's going to be a bunch of crawl dads and some of my specials, gumbo, red beans and rice, jambalaya, etouffee. And I want you all to come out and see me. Now, here's the thing, folks. I have to have your reservations for your tickets in by the 20th of this month. So you have plenty of time. It's $13.95 a head for the dinner. And how many folks are there? I'm divided into the cost of the bag of crawfish. And that's going on plus gratuity. So the more of you that are there, the less it's going to cost you for your crawl dads. So get it, get up, pick up the phone, call me, 436-0287. The number's right down here. Call me, make your reservation. Now, the other thing I wanted to do in the public announcement is Ellie Brown, my sweet friend up at the Flowing Springs, her and Mark are having a talent show. It's a summer jamboree and talent show, okay? 
I don't know if you can get a shot there, Griff, but there it is. It's a summer jamboree and talent show, okay? And let me read to you folks what's on here. Tuesday the 4th, Tuesday the 11th, and Tuesday the 18th of this month between 8 and 10 are the tryouts. And then the final performance is going to be 9 o'clock to whatever on Friday the 7th, Friday the 14th, and Friday the 21st. Now, the person that wins this first place is going to have a trip to the islands. Now, I don't know what island they're talking about. It could be an island off of Manny Young somewhere, but it's a free trip. All its men's paid. And um, I'll tell you what. I wish I wasn't working, folks, because, you know, I like to do that kind of stuff. I took third in the talent show around here once, I heard. Now, let's get down to cooking. Enough of the public announcement stuff and enough of uh, the talking. Let's get right down to it. Now, what I have here, folks, in this bowl is Dijon mustard, okay? Now, I want to show you how to make a vinaigrette. And what we do is we're going to take oil. You could use olive oil, regular table oil. Um, anything that fits your diet, but you're going to put the oil slowly into the vinegar. And when you do that, it emulsifies. You're making an emulsif emulsification here of the oil and the mustard. And you see how it's already starting to grow because the oil is being married, and you add it slowly, it's being married into the mustard. Now, if you add too much oil, you might have to add a little bit of water to get it to come back. So add it slow. And don't be afraid to whip it hard because that's what it's going to take to get it to marry. You got to get that whip going through. Now, I'm doing it this way for you so I can take some time up to show you how it's done. Normally, I would just put it into my blender or my mixing bowl up on my counter and just turn the machine on and start to add. But see how it's growing? It's absorbing the oil into the mustard and it's growing. Now, this is a very good way, by the way, to expand and stretch out your mustard uh, for you folks that have little delis and luncheonettes and whatnot and you want to get the more bang for your buck, that's a really good way to take an expensive mustard and make it grow. It still spreads right, it still works right. It's great for basting meats, by the way. Okay, now, we got this coming up like that. It's looking good, I'm gonna put my oil back. Now I'm gonna take red wine vinegar, and I'm gonna start adding that slowly, because I don't want it to break. But it'll start to thin down with that, okay? But we want it to stay congealed. I want to say hi to Bruce Gilmore and Jan Gilmore. I want to say hi to my father, Bucky DeLuke. I want to wish him all the luck in the Marlin tournament. Say hi to my son, John, and my daughter, Jennifer. My attorney, Mitch Crane, I want to thank him and love him. And Miss Kitty, I appreciate all the support and backbone you've been giving us in the show here and everything else we've been doing. I want to add that Chip French has got Orleans open down in Paoli. It's a good place to go. If you're down there, pop in. Nice thing about the restaurant and bar business, folks, there's enough of it out there for everybody. Go out and enjoy the scene. It's fun. Okay, now, hey, when you get it to the consistency that you so desire, and this is looking pretty good for my desires here, I, I feel I can work with that real well. I'll put my vinegar back away. Let's see, now I'm gonna bring out some celery salt. Add a little bit of celery salt to it. Just to get some of that flavor of the celery in there, because it's going to go on salad. And I took from my garden, Miss Kitty's garden. Miss Kitty, she grows beautiful basil. Huh? My grandmother, when I was a boy, she used to take a little leaf of basil and she used to take it, crumple up, and go like this behind the ear. So you go down the street smelling extremely Italian, but at the same time, smelling good you know it's the uh, they used to take the mint and put it in the wash water and when they scrubbed the floors in the house the house smelled like mint it smelled wonderful okay now i'm going to take this fresh basil and i'm making a basil vinaigrette okay now i take my fresh basil and i chop her up real nice alike 
And I know Olga the Toluca, she would like to have this vinaigrette in her refrigerator. I'll tell you what, one of the finest chefs in the world is my mom. Buddy, you can cook, baby. Okay, now, you mix that in there. You let it steep a little bit inside. You know, you put this away, and tomorrow it'll be really good. Now, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of pepper. I want black pepper, not white. A little bit of black pepper. There's enough salt in the mustard. I don't need any more salt. And that's that. Now, you could throw onion in there, green onion, anything else you'd like. But that's how I'd like it right there. That's, that's fine enough for this chef, OK? Now, let me find a place where I can put that. I'll show you the pouring consistency. Now, you see this here? When I slowly pour this, you see that? It's like a cream. It's almost like cream, OK? All right? So that's that, OK? We got that out of our way. Now, someone called and asked me to take the time to show the sauce for the buffalo wings. Remember when I was making buffalo wings? Well, I didn't make the sauce because I had it made. I just pulled it and used it. I want to show you something. Now, I took the liberty to take a gallon, a full gallon of red hot sauce, OK? I took a full gallon, and I put it into a pot, and I let it come to a boil. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pound of butter, a whole pound, and I'm putting that pound of butter in there. Now I'm going to let that butter melt. We want that butter to help cream and smooth out the hot, OK? Now we'll just put it in here, and we'll let it melt a little bit. And while that's doing that, I'm going to show you something else. I have here clear gel. Clear gel is the same thing as cornstarch. But the only difference is, is when you chill it down, it doesn't get rock hard. It stays smooth, and you can pour it out, just like if you were using arrowroot to tighten up. The only difference is arrowroot has a bitter back taste. Clear gel doesn't. Now, you can buy clear gel in your good IGAs. Okay, I found that your IGAs are the stores that carry things like clear gels, especially out near your Honeybrook and your Lancaster, New Holland areas, uh, where you have more bulk cooking going on. You have more farmer-oriented people. They uh, tend to use certain products, uh, more pro different products than you'd find in the inner cities. So I suggest you get yourself in the car, drive out to Blue Ball, to the Shady Maple, walk through their bulk section, and folks, you're going to find out things. Give you an idea. $2.70 for a big bag of vegetable pasta. Now, if you would buy this by the boxes, you'd spend about $6. So that's what I'm telling you. You take the day and go out there, and if you have yourselves a good-sized pantry, you're going to be doing yourselves a favor. Now, the butter had melted. This is to a temperature where it's almost boiling. I'm going to mix up my clear gel in my water. It's about a 50-50 mixture, OK? I go in here because I let it sit on the bottom. And you know how they get? It gets like a little bit of plaster down there. You got to get it moving around and get it suspended in the water, and then it moves. But if you let it sit, it gets hard. OK, now, my stuff's coming to a boil here. I'm going to add my cornstarch or my clear gel, OK? And what it's going to do is help tighten this up a little bit. And we'll let it come to another boil. Don't be afraid to let it sit for a minute or two. Don't be in a hurry. Too often, everybody's in a hurry, and then things don't work. And they say, how come it doesn't work? Now, the reason why we like it this consistency is so it'll cling to our chicken when we make our chicken. Now I'm going to take this sauce. I'm going to take it over here. It handles hot. I'm going to pour it into my container. And that is how you make buffalo wing sauce, folks. It's not difficult. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to do that. OK? I suggest that you make it. 
You can put it to the side. You can come back and use it anytime. It stays fresh forever. Nothing's going to grow in that, folks. That is really hot. Okay? Now, speaking of really hot, someone else said to me, Chef, you make the best salsa. How come your salsa is so good and ours isn't? Well, let's see how I approach it. I have some dried cilantro. You could use it fresh. I dry it out just a little bit. It makes it easier for you to work with. I'll chop it up. It's a condensed flavor when it's dried. Okay? Now that's cilantro. What that is, it's the leaf of coriander. Now I have a can of tomato juice. Then a can of crushed tomatoes and another can of crushed tomatoes. So I just put about a half a gallon of liquid in there of tomatoes. Tomato juice and crushed tomato. Next, I'm going to take an onion. And since I'm doing three onions, I'm going to do the step all at one time, the same steps. Because you don't put, pick up your knife and put it down. You know, every time I pick up my knife, I like to get paid for it. It doesn't always work that way, but that's what I like. Now, we'll get the debris out of the way. Let me find where I made that incision. By the way, everybody's gardens are growing great this year. It's been the strangest summer I've ever seen. Let me give you an idea. My first eggplant grown in a garden, never been done before. Miss Kitty knows how to prepare a garden. Listen to this. Can you hear that? That is solid, folks. That's not air in there. That's pure meat. That's great stuff. Everything's been growing really good this year. Okay, now, we take our onions, we turn them down like this, and then we get ready to do the big chop chop. The big chop chop, okay? We'll just put them right into the pot, right there. Chop chop. And I'm starting to get used to my glasses, folks. Every time I bend my head down now, they don't fall off. It took a while. Felt like I was having walleye vision. I just saw that movie Hot Shot the other day. I'll tell you what, that was funny. By the way, the songwriting competition here was excellent. It was really fun. We have a lot of fun here at Alibis. We really do. You gotta come and see us. You pop your head in the kitchen and say, I'm here, feed me, and I'll cook for you special. You won't even need the menu. Okay, a couple more onions here. I think that's enough onion for there. Now, some jalapenos or jalapenos. And you notice I didn't say onion. Yeah, right. Strap. That Justin Wilson turkey. You'd think after a year harassing that bird, he'd be flying up here to have a cook-off with me. No character. That's okay. We know who can cook, don't we? Jalapenos or jalapenos. You chop them up real good. Don't worry about the seeds. They help things come right along. They take these bad boys right in there. Uh-huh. Don't you know? There we are. Okay, now, what do I have here? Tomatoes, fresh ones, chop, chop, chop. Fresh tomatoes. Some more fresh tomatoes. Isn't this fun? Having fun yet? Now, I don't know if it's Thursday or Saturday when you're watching this show, but I want to say good morning to those on Saturday, and I'd like to say good evening to those on Thursday. Okay. 
okay, we're coming around the mountain on this, folks. I mean, you know, I'm making it fresh right before your eyes. I mean, there isn't much to, to know. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this, as Bob Kirk from Toby Hill always says. And I'll tell you what, you want to get some good meat, folks, you go out to see Bob Kirk at Toby Hill. He's got the stuff. Okay, now, put in my cilantro. Put that there. Some cumin. Come on over. A little bit of black pepper. That sounds crazy. But you remember when I made my buffalo wing sauce? Don't tell anybody. That's my secret additive. Don't let anybody know that now. It's a secret. Yeah, right. Here we go. Now, folks, what's missing? I'll tell you what's missing. Belle pepper. I was speaking French, just in case you guys wanted to know. Yeah, right. Okay, here we go. Chop, chop, chop. A little bit of chop, chop here. Chop, chop there. Here, chop, there, chop. Okay, we're coming around a mountain. I know I'm getting up against the clock, folks. Now, the crew is going on vacation. Everybody needs a little bit of time to get things done. You know, it's the end of the summer. So we're going to repeat this show. You're going to see it twice. But I want to say that on the 22nd of this month, I'm having a Cajun crawfish feast here. It's $13.95 a head, plus splitting the cost of the crawfish and gratuity. It's a cash bar. It's going to be held upstairs, so you're away from all the commotion downstairs. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be there. I want to see you. Come on and see me. We'll talk about old times. And set something up where if there's something special you want to eat, come into the kitchen and tell me. If I have the materials, folks, it'll be made for you. And I don't print everything I can cook on a menu. OK, there it is. Fresh salsa made before you're out. Let me pull some out, put it onto a plate so you can see the consistency of it. It's nice stuff, it's fresh, it's healthy, okay? Now, I wanna thank you all very much for tuning into the Mac John Cooking Show this summer. And I stress to you this, this summer I've been doing nothing but vegetables, good vegetables. Now, my tip of the day, which I'm gonna incorporate right into my show. You take an ear of corn, a whole ear of corn, you come up to your microwave, you put it in your microwave, you put it on high for a minute and a half, okay? For a minute and a half, just like I put it. Now, the Indians used to take it like this and throw it onto their fires. And then they would take it and they would peel it down, okay? They would just peel it down like this and hold it like this right here. Okay, that's how simple it is. That looks like an ice cream cone or something, doesn't it? Now, I want you to notice something about this corn. Let me come close here so you can see this. See how nice these rows are? How nice tight packed these are? This is really well-grown corn here, okay? I have seen some terrible corn this summer, but this corn is some beautiful corn. It's local stuff. It's grown right out there near Bowmansville. Okay, Mac John's tip of the week. As I said, the best way to cook corn, just like the Indians, but they didn't have a microwave. They threw theirs on a fire. I popped mine in the microwave, still like this. You ready for this, folks? It's hot, steaming, beautiful, and there you go. You hold it like this and you eat it. It's great. All the nutrition was kept inside. You didn't boil it away. That was Mac John's tip of the week. Trace, come here, hon. We want to tell everybody. Come on out on the 22nd and make all reservations by the 20th. That's right. Mac John's Cajun Feast, the first one of this summer. We'll see you later. <laughs>